With the installation of the Adobe Creative Suite 3 and Adobe InDesign CS3, a series of sample scripts comes pre-installed in the scripts panel, which is accessible through window automation scripts. They do lots of different things. I'll just twirl down this application folder and you'll notice this is where these sample scripts are located. If you happen to be on a PC you'll probably see VB scripts and JavaScripts. JavaScripts are cross-platform scripts which will run on both Mac and PC. Apple scripts are specific to the Mac and VB scripts are specific to the PC. Um, as you can see there's a series of scripts available here. Now these are installed at application level, that means they're accessible to all users. If you're interested in adding more scripts at application level, right click this folder in your scripts panel and reveal in the finder Audio Explorer and open the scripts panel folder and install them in this directory here, either in their own subfolder or just drop them straight in there. Obviously having some folders will give you a little bit more structure and a little bit more organization of your script. If you were to install them at user level, just be aware that again it's the same sort of directory going into the scripts panel. These scripts will not be accessible to other users logging to the same workstation. So if you want to share them, make sure you install them at application level because otherwise every person will have to install them individually. To get a little bit of an overview of what all of the scripts do, access the InDesign CS3 sample script readme file from the finder and that will give you a quick overview of what all of the scripts do. And if I just scroll down here, you'll notice there's a quick, quick description of what each and every one of them does. A little bullet point form. If you look on my website under the script directory, you can download a PDF file that has a little bit more um, d descriptive information about each of the scripts and I'm hoping to add a few more of these podcasts about several scripts to my website over the next few weeks slash months. Okay so how do we run a script? Well in this case the script that I want to run is the corner effects or corner options as it's now called in CS3 script. In CS3 so it's I'd expect that to change at some point the name of that script. I can either double click this script after I've got a box selected or I can select it and then select run script from the panel menu here. So if I select run script I'll be given a dialog box that asks me to set the corner options or the corner effects. Now the difference between this corner options dialog and the one that you've got under the object menu is that in this case you have the choice to select which corners you want to apply your corner effects to. Corner options I should say. Whereas in the corner option dialog box whatever value you enter there will always apply to every corner. So for instance if I only want to apply something to corner number three I select the third point or if I only want to apply round corners on say the even corners of my rectangle I'll select even points or if I just want to use the first and the last I'll select first and last and obviously the other ones will make sense if you see the diagram on the left hand side. So let's select even points, click OK and there you go that's automatically applied that. That's kind of cool. Now there is another way of applying or running scripts and that is via a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut. Now obviously we'll have to add that keyboard shortcut because there's none listed in the scripts panel. So if I go to the edit menu, select keyboard shortcuts and I'll start by creating a new set and we'll call it Kari's shortcuts based on the default so that it basically picks up all of the current default shortcuts. The scripts are available in their own product area under the script menu and if I scroll down you'll notice you can actually see the, the subdirectory application level samples JavaScript and there's our corner effects script. The trick now is to find a shortcut that has not yet been used so let's try this shift apple option C. Hmm. Okay well that's been used so I don't actually want to use it because if I click assign now what that will actually do will, will remove the shortcut from the fill frame proportionately uh, proportionally um, command so that will no longer work so I have to come up with another one so let's try shift apple C that doesn't work of course that doesn't work shift 
Option C or Shift Alt C, that works. That's an unassigned shortcut. I can assign that. I can click OK. And really, now that I've got a shortcut, I no longer need to see that scripts panel. So as soon as I select Shift Option C, I get the same dialog box. I will use Bevel because I can, not because I have to, and we'll go for the first tool just to see something different. And there you go. That's a quick introduction to using a simple corner options or corner effects scripts, as it's called. If you happen to still be an InDesign CS2 user, have a have a look at your installer CD for InDesign, or at, if you've got the full Creative Suite on, I think it's the resource CD number one, and install the scripts. I do something very similar. Most of them are very similar. So have fun.